Have you ever wondered which Boeing aircraft is considered the worst of the worst? While Boeing is renowned for its groundbreaking innovations and remarkable successes, not all of their projects have gone according to plan. Sometimes, even the most ambitious designs can end in spectacular failure. So, which Boeing aircraft is the worst? Why is it aviation's disaster? Let's find out the truth behind Boeing's most notorious flop in today's episode. Before finding out why it failed, let's look at the history of this plane. In 1945, the demand for passenger travel surged significantly after World War II. This shift drove the need for larger aircraft and advanced aviation technology, transforming the civil aviation industry. Airport runways, which had been extended and reinforced with concrete during the war, now allowed larger aircraft to take off and land at airports rather than seaports as before. These innovations opened the way for transcontinental aircraft equipped with four engines offering higher speeds and greater comfort for passengers. Aircraft like the Douglas DC-4 and Lockheed Constellation enabled airlines to lower fares, becoming dominant players in international air travel. The aviation industry at that time was rapidly evolving, pushing Boeing to compete fiercely to maintain its position. Designing a new aircraft required a rigorous research and development process, which could take many years, and Boeing was not eager to endure all those challenges. So, they came up with an innovative idea, the 377 Stratocruiser. This was Boeing's first attempt at creating a double-deck passenger plane, and its development was based on the Boeing C-97 Stratofreighter, a military transport aircraft used during the war. The C-97 itself was an adapted version of the B-50 Superfortress, a heavy, long-range Rotrend bomber after World War II. After World War II ended, the unique design of the Stratocruiser allowed Boeing to incorporate a cocktail bar on the lower deck, while passengers could relax in seats on the upper deck. The two levels were connected by a spiral staircase, offering an unprecedented level of luxury in commercial aviation at the time. At the heart of the Stratocruiser were four Pratt & Whitney R4 360 B6 Wasp major engines, the most powerful radial engines ever fitted on a commercial aircraft. These engines use an advanced water injection system to boost power from 3,000 to 3,500 horsepower during takeoff marking a significant breakthrough and pushing the limits of piston engines at that time. Thanks for following until this part. Please don't forget to subscribe if you are new here. Now let's move to the next part, who is the first customer of this aircraft. Despite Boeing facing financial difficulties after the war due to canceled bomber orders, Chairman William Allen took a significant risk with the Stratocruiser and instructed his engineers to build 50 of these aircraft without any confirmed orders. Allen aimed to dominate the market with the largest and most luxurious passenger aircraft. Although the plane faced numerous issues, by the end of 1945, Pan Am Chairman Juan Tripp saw a major opportunity with the aircraft after witnessing a Boeing C-97 Stratofreighter fly non-stop from Seattle to Washington, D.C. in just six hours and four minutes. On November 29, 1945, Pan Am became the largest initial customer for the Stratocruiser, ordering 20 aircraft at $1.3 million each, totaling $24.5 million. Following Pan Am, other airlines also began ordering the 377. Initially, it seemed Boeing's bet on the Stratocruiser was paying off, as the company built an additional six aircraft, bringing the total to 56. However, it soon became clear that airlines had made costly mistakes with their purchases of this aircraft. On April 19, 49, Pan Am became the first airline to use the Stratocruiser for scheduled flights, starting with the route between San Francisco and Honolulu. By the end of the year, other airlines also began using it for transatlantic flights. However, within just nine months, the aircraft started experiencing engine failures. On January 19, 50, a Pan Am Stratocruiser had an engine failure over the Pacific while en route to Tokyo, and another 377 from Northwest Orient had an engine failure near Chicago. The worst incident occurred in April 19th, 52, when a Stratocruiser lost a propeller blade from engine number two over Brazil, causing severe turbulence and disintegration in midair, leading to the crash in the Amazon rainforest and the death of all 50 people on board. 
The most famous Strat Cruiser incident occurred in October 1956 when a Pan Am flight from Honolulu to San Francisco faced a terrifying problem. The number one propeller spun uncontrollably and the crew couldn't stop it. Engine number four also failed, forcing the pilot to ditch the plane into the sea. Fortunately, all 24 passengers and crew survived. What caused these planes to break engines mid-flight? Subsequent investigations uncovered alarming causes. When designing the Strat Cruiser, Boeing initially planned to install UR3-350 engines, but Pan Am CEO W. Tripp suggested the more powerful R4-360 engines. However, this turned out to be a major mistake. The Pratt and Whitney engines were unreliable, with blades prone to cracking and breaking mid-air. The Strat Cruiser had two propeller options, but the Curtis propeller, though stronger, faced issues due to its extra weight and complexity. After the incidents, engineers found cracks in the gearbox and hollow blades caused by materials not being strong enough to withstand engine pressure, and the engines were also difficult to maintain. The consequence is that Pan Am spent $80 million on maintaining and repairing the Strat Cruiser. By 1960, due to massive maintenance costs, U.S. airlines faced financial strain and had to retire the Strat Cruiser. Reliability issues damaged its reputation, leading most airlines to remove it from their fleets in less than 10 years. It seems that the issues that made this aircraft so terrible were all related to the engines. However, this is a Boeing aircraft and they must take responsibility for that. The Boeing 377 Stratocruiser, once a symbol of luxury and innovation in aviation, unfortunately suffered a regrettable failure due to serious technical problems. Today, nearly all aircraft have completely disappeared, with only one Super Guppy, a cargo variant, still in operation. The current Super Guppy is owned by NASA and is used to transport spacecraft and rocket components to this day. Although it is no longer widely recognized, the legacy of the Stratocruiser lives on in aviation history and especially in the hearts of aviation enthusiasts around the world. So is it the worst airplane of Boeing? In the present, mention of the worst airplane, which one do you remember? Yes, Boeing 737. MAX is definitely on this blacklist. Why? Throughout its operational history, it has been involved in serious accidents that have resulted in hundreds of fatalities. Lion Air Flight 610, on October 29, 2018, a Boeing 737 MAX 8 took off from Jakarta, Indonesia with a destination of Pangkal Pinang. Shortly after departure, the aircraft encountered a critical issue when the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, MCAS for short, was erroneously activated due to faulty data from an angle of attack, AOA for short, sensor. The system repeatedly pushed the plane's nose downward, overwhelming the pilot's attempts to regain control. The aircraft crashed into the Java Sea, resulting in the deaths of all 189 people on board. The investigation revealed that the faulty sensor, combined with inadequate training on the MCAS system, contributed significantly to the crash. On March 10, 2019, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302, another Boeing 737 MAX 8, took off from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, heading for Nairobi, Kenya. Similar to the Lion Air incident, the MCAS system was triggered by a malfunctioning AOA sensor, causing the aircraft to pitch down uncontrollably. Despite the pilot's efforts to counteract the system, they were unable to regain control. The aircraft crashed near Bishoftu, Ethiopia, killing all 157 people on board. The investigation revealed that the MKS activation was caused by the same issues with the AOA sensor and the pilot's training did not adequately prepare them for handling such emergencies. Following the Ethiopian Airlines crash, Global Aviation Authorities grounded the Boeing 737 MAX on March 20, 19. This unprecedented action was taken to prevent further incidents while investigations into the aircraft's design flaws were conducted. The investigations found that the MCAS system had significant design weaknesses, including reliance on a single AOA sensor without redundancy. This manufacturer was criticized for its internal practices, including its decision not to fully disclose the MCAS system to pilots and its prioritization of speed over safety during the aircraft's development. Before the two major crashes, there were several incidents involving this Boeing aircraft during its testing and early operations. Some issues were reported by pilots and technicians, but they did not result in severe accidents. 
These incidents included minor system malfunctions and operational challenges that were addressed before the aircraft was widely deployed. The grounding of the aircraft had a profound financial impact on Boeing, with the company incurring billions in losses. This included compensation to airlines for the grounded aircraft, production delays, and legal settlements with the victims' families. Boeing's stock value dropped significantly, and the company faced extensive legal challenges. In 2021, this company settled with the U.S. Department of Justice, agreeing to pay over $2.5 billion in fines and compensation related to Max's certification and the crashes. In your opinion, which Boeing aircraft is the worst? In the process of creating aircraft that serve people's lives, this manufacturer has not only been a symbol of human ingenuity, but also a source of pride for the American people. However, don't forget to leave your opinion about the worst aircraft in the comments below. Thank you, and see you next time.